Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a long, long overdue update video on the LFX RX-8. I've been daily driving the car for about six or seven months now. Been filming several different times trying to give you guys some driving footage, some ideas of how the car drives with the new drivetrain and everything, and what it's like to daily drive it, and uh, what I think about the entire swap. Then we found out that my wife was pregnant, so we've been taking care of a lot of house stuff, making sure that that's all ready before our baby girl shows up here in a couple months. So um, anyway, I put off doing a lot of videos until now, and about a month ago, I did this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, so the front end's pretty jacked up. I don't even know the extent of the damage yet. I just got the car back a couple hours ago. It took the insurance company about a month to figure everything out, but I did get the car back because I've put way too much time and money into this car. But that said, I think the plans for this car have changed a little bit. Like I said, we've got a baby on the way, probably gonna get a sedan or something to make it easier for the wife to drive it and for us to get the baby in and out. So that leaves this car to not needing to do daily driver uh, requirements. Depending on the extent of this damage, and we're gonna start cutting into this and see what's going on with it, this may be the new car for weekend driving in the mountains, autocrossing, as well as uh, track days and maybe some time attack. So uh, not that we're gonna scrap the white car, but the white car may now be a donor car for all the parts that we need on this car. Let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on here. Now, I did this. I did this damage right here. That's from a tree. It's been raining like crazy here, and I had really crappy winter tires, and uh, the back kicked out, went over a curb, and sure enough, I picked a place where there was a big embankment that I went down quite a bit, 70, 80 feet, into a bunch of trees, and one, one decided to stop the whole car. I was okay, the car did a great job, my door was able to open. The passenger side door, I will show you, um, it has trouble opening. But so I did do this right here in the front. But what I've noticed is that the salvage yard or wrecking yard or wherever this thing was did this. So it looks like they've damaged the control arm on here. So before we can move this underneath the carport, we're gonna have to uh, get the control arm or tow arm or whichever one it is bent on here. We're gonna have to get it off the white car and move it onto here and then put a new wheel on there so that we can get this thing rolling. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other damage. The tree impacted right here, obviously. And it looks like the radiator and radiator fan shroud have been pushed up against the engine, but I don't think the engine has actually been hit. The intake is bent here a little bit, and our Mazda ECU box here is damaged, uh, but the GM ECU is fine. Now the 3D printed bracket that's holding the GM fuse box and everything is pushed back and obviously this whole core support is damaged. The headlights are all damaged. The fuse box looks like it's busted right here. Other than that though, it looks all right. Now the coolant is gone, so obviously we've leaked it all out of the radiator. The oil coolers have been pushed back. Now that one was not hooked to anything, but this one has been pushed back. Watch out. Of course, my dog's trying to get into the YouTube life. Um, anyway, so this oil cooler, even though it's pushed back, I didn't see it leaking any oil uh, when the tow truck was pulling it up the embankment. Now, this tire is flat. And like I said, this fender has been pushed back 
and you can see the bolt holes kind of they're not aligned with where they were on the fender see if you can see that that little white area there shows that the fender has been pushed back underneath the washer and so it's pushed this back into this area and so when you try to open the door I'm not going to do it because I don't want to crush my dog's face but it pushes up against here and there's a little bit of a gap here on the passenger side door where it doesn't line up perfectly but once we get this fender off uh, we'll be able to see if it's just um, out of alignment or if there's actually damage to where it mounts uh, hopefully it's not too bad so back here this side is fine the shrouds knocked off a little bit from where they were pulling it back up onto the tow truck and again this wheel is damaged and since it's sitting right on the wheel the other side is pretty tucked this side is just fine and even though this fender is pushed back here it's not pushed back into this door so the door actually does open so game plan I'm gonna go ahead and pull the suspension piece that I need off the white car and we're gonna go ahead and install it on the back here replace the wheels and then get it under the carport so that we can start working on this car getting all the front damage off and seeing what we're gonna have to replace or rebuild all right quick update on this tow arm this is what my scattered collection of destruction tools are so I used a cutoff wheel to come in here and cut the middle of that bolt apart and once I did that I was able to grind the sides down on the end of the bolt and use vice grips and a really long extension through the vice grips to wiggle it back and forth so now I'm just working on drilling out the other side of the bolt because it still doesn't want to come out I'll let you know what happens all right so here's the good arm on the left and then here is the bad arm on the right so as you can see this one's not too bad this is lower arm or lower link and then here's where it gets real fun here is the toe arm and this is the straight one and then this is the one where whoever was towing the car around the tow yard or the salvage yard decided to hook their hook to this piece and see it grabbed it here too once this fully bent so now that we have these things out I'm gonna go ahead and put the new ones in and then we can get the front up in the air and change out these flat tires and get it moved into the carport all right so last night I ran out of light while I was working on the rear suspension I did finally get it all put together um, and then ended up moving all the tires and stuff uh, the bad ones off the car and then the good ones onto the car so then today I've actually had my brother come over and help me move the car up underneath the carport so we've got it rolled in here now and we've gone ahead and uh, taken the hood off the car and so that way because there was no way for it to be propped up or anything like that since it's busted so I've kind of looked over the car a little bit but uh, there's only so much I can see with all this stuff still attached so we're gonna start um, just by taking off what we can unbolt and unscrew and uh, then start cutting some stuff off too and then um, probably not in this video but in the next video we'll jack the car up put it on jack stands take off the wheels probably the front suspension everything and I was hoping the engine wasn't going to need to come out but after looking at it last night with it up in the air to change the um, change the tires looks like all that stuff's gonna have to come out because just like the tow truck drivers did or whoever it was um, worked on the back of the car putting the hook on the suspension and pulling it they did the same thing with uh, one of the cross members underneath the front of the car and so it's all bent up as well so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start taking everything that we can off up here sorry my dogs are going crazy um, but yeah we're gonna start taking all this stuff off and uh, see what kind of damage there is underneath
So quick update, pulled off a good chunk of the front here, um, at least stuff that was easy enough to break off um, or cut off or unscrew or unbolt really quickly just to start getting an idea of what's going on. So let me show you what I found so far. So we've got the front bumper beam off. And as you can see, that side it was smashed in pretty good. It's actually busted uh, the front bumper beam right off of its mount and then that's twisted. Um, the ECU box that was right here, it was destroyed. Now the ECU, the uh, electronic power steering module, all that stuff seemed to look okay, uh, but you know, without testing it, there's, it's uh, impossible to know. Um, I do have a leak where I thought I didn't have a leak originally on the oil cooler because I didn't see it when it when it wrecked. Um, oh, the uh, there is a, a leak at the oil cooler. So anyway, I've pulled this back right here and you can see the uh, radiator and obviously the, the fan shroud and everything has come apart. And uh, so that's the next thing on the list to go ahead and pull off. And uh, like I showed before, the tab here on the fuse box is busted, not a big deal. So yeah, we'll keep at it, see what else we find. But that frame right there is what I'm most concerned about and uh, it definitely looks like it's it, it's bent quite a bit so uh, let's see once we get down to it all right so I've got the front bumper piece cut off I don't know if the camera shut off or not I know on the time-lapse setup uh, it only does so many pictures um, to create like a time lapse before it shuts off so I've still got to figure out this camera but uh, hopefully you caught all that but I cut the front bumper beam and uh, radiator shroud and, and uh, all that stuff off so now we can go ahead and pull the radiator and get a better idea of uh, what this frame rail looks like so we'll go ahead and do that hopefully it doesn't make too much of a mess and then we'll take a look at that frame rail. Um, I've basically got this whole front end off. Let me go ahead and show you here. So cut all that front out, got the radiator out, and the uh, upper radiator hose is still good, but the bottom hose was pinched. And it looks like this custom pipe right here, which is in the um, the Keisler automation kit to, uh, to run the coolant up the side of the engine up to the lower uh, radiator. Uh, outlet you have uh, this hose that comes in here and it's actually pushed up against the alternator bracket now right here is a 3d printed custom piece that actually holds the um, e-shaft sensor right up against the uh, the factory Mazda uh, tone ring so that your uh, electronic power steering and your um, tachometer and everything work in the car uh, so that did bust, but now the billet piece is still safe. So uh, I'll contact Andrew. Basically, I'm going to take account of everything that's missing and busted and everything, and uh, and uh, let Andrew know so I can I can buy all these pieces again. But uh, luckily, it looks like all the billet pieces. I was worried that the uh, the sway bar here was going to be pushed in and the uh, custom sway bar mounts because all of this is a part of the uh, the LFX swap kit so I was hoping you know this wasn't damaged because then I'd have to you know replace these which you know Andrew will sell them but uh, but since it, it is custom it would be uh, maybe a little bit of a wait time I'm not sure anyway this looks good so on to the frame rail so the original plan was to um, once the original plan not not before the wreck but since the wreck the plan was to basically turn this into the race car because the um, the engines already in here the rest of the car is just a much nicer car and uh, I've already got the battery mounted in the back and all that stuff so we'll basically use the white car as like a parts car to fix this car but now this front end uh 
my thinking was that we will cut in front of the uh, strut tower braces and basically tube the front maybe even make it a quick disconnect front that said once i started looking further into this once it showed up at my house i was really concerned so let me see if i can show you here i still got to get this um, oil catch can off but right here the fender is pushed up so i knew that this was all pushed back and i showed you guys the washer here or at least the marks from where the the bolt was and this fender has been pushed back and then as i looked there's a crease down here in the uh in the the fender frame area so my concern was that the strut tower is actually going to be in a in a different position and the uh and that the frame may be in a different position but it actually looks like it all buckled right here and so this is all twisted let's see if i can show you so that's twisted but now once it gets back to the strut tower it actually looks like it is flat and straight so hopefully this will will be good now i'm going to go ahead and take the fenders off so we can have a better look at that and then uh and then in the next video we're going to jack up the car get underneath it we're probably going to have to remove this subframe because it looks like the car is sitting a lot lower than it should be so i think there's something going on here still um but uh but yeah, we'll go ahead and get these fenders off and see if we can get a better idea of this. And uh, we may still take it to a frame guy to get this straightened out before cutting off the front and doing the tubular front end. But, uh, but we'll have to see once we get all this off. All right, so I may have spoken a little too soon on this. Here's the, well, what I think is the good side. As you can see, this bar right here is nice and straight and it's flat along there and then obviously this frame rail is straight you can't really see it because the fuse box we got to get the wiring harness out next but then let's go over to this side and yeah as you can see it is not straight at all it actually comes up here and peaks and then back here we've got this crease now beyond that it actually looks fine doesn't look like there's any damage along here at all uh, which is strange because the door is not sitting as flush as it should and maybe that's because the fender pushed into it I don't know I'll have to look at that. Maybe it bent along here. And it does look like there's some paint bent here. So if this is pushed up and then we've got a crease right here, it's most likely that our strut tower is actually in a different spot. So even though the frame looks straight back here, it's gotta be tweaked up. Now this, this wheel was the first one to hit the curb. And so that may have bent that up. And then when the tree pushed in, it compounded all the damage here. Uh, but it looks like we're definitely gonna have to take this to someone that can straighten this out on an alignment rack, see if they can get that all straight. So then we can lop it off right here and start building out our tube chassis on the front side that side should be fine this side's going to probably need some work all right guys well that's going to be a wrap for this one thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to those that have been subscribed for a very long time and even my new subscribers that have been looking forward to an update on this car and uh i'm sure it's not the update that you expected certainly wasn't the update that i expected but we're going to roll with it we'll get this thing fixed and we'll make it better than it was before if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Take it easy.